It's reported that up to 200 British academics are being investigated because unknowingly their research may be helping the Chinese build weapons of mass destruction. At the same time, ministers are pledged to introduce new measures to stop British firms benefiting from the forced labour of China's Uyghur Muslims. Government, business, higher education, everyone is radically rethinking their dealings with China. This is the Michael Crick Report for Mail Plus. For months, we've seen pictures from Xinjiang province in northwestern China showing the Chinese regime suppressing hundreds of thousands of Uyghur Muslims, brainwashing them, wiping out their culture, sterilizing women, what many call genocide. Then last week, the BBC exposed the gang rape and torture of Uyghur women. They were three men. Not one, but three. They did whatever evil their mind could think of, and they didn't spare any part of my body. Call it forced labour or slavery, Uyghurs are also made to pick cotton. So campaigners in the West urge people to boycott Chinese clothing and other goods. Bear in mind that 20% of world cotton come from the Uyghur region, and one in five shirts in the world sold are uh, made from the Uyghur forced labor. Uh, therefore, I think people can do a lot. And also um, high-tech products like uh, phones, uh, uh, Huawei phones still selling in, in, in shops here uh, in this country. And Huawei is complicit in um, working with the Public Security Bureau uh, since the atrocities started, even before that, from 2014, uh, working with the uh, CCP uh, Public Security Bureau, developing apps, uh, also involved in facial recognition uh, uh, techniques. Basically, they, they say uh, they're building safe city, but the safe city means police state. Huawei have faced such claims before, but say they don't develop systems which identify people by their ethnicity. The proceeding will start shortly. Last autumn, the Commons Business Committee grilled well-known firms accused of possible links to forced labour, among them Nike, Boohoo and TikTok, who all denied doing wrong. I've been doing some work with the Jewish News and they've had two front pages which reflect the situation in Xinjiang, two million people in surveillance, in, in camps, <clears throat> their labour being exploited. When did Miss Hunter, TikTok, realise that their parent company, your parent company, Bike Dance, was implicated in providing surveillance equipment to manage these camps in Xinjiang? Bike Dance Limited and you know, any of its subsidiaries produce operate or disseminate any kind of surveillance equipment. The company does not produce, does not have any personnel related to surveillance. So I have to say those allegations you've just noted are, are in, incorrect and, and false. Tom Tugendhat, who chairs the Commons Foreign Affairs Committee, has spent much of his time urging we take a much harder line on human rights in China. Is there something that ordinary people can do? Yes. Terms? We've got to ask those who make things where they got them. If you buy a coat, if you buy shoes, if you buy goods, where do they come from? Who made them? But it's a bit difficult to go into a shop and ask that. They won't know. Sure, but you can demand that it's on the website. You can demand that it's, on, that it's available for, for, uh, for identification from, a, from a, a company who you know, claims to have an ethical uh, trading policy that they should publish it. But all of this comes at a cost, doesn't it? Yes, it does. I'm afraid it does. And, you know, it's absolutely right that uh, there is a cost to not using slave goods. That's correct. It's a cost I think almost everybody in the United Kingdom would be prepared to pay. It's just 18 months since Huddersfield University gave the Chinese ambassador to Britain, who denied any human rights abuses in Xinjiang, an honorary doctorate. And the spotlight is now on links between British universities and China. 
Imperial College London is one of 15 universities cited in a pamphlet this week from the think tank Civitas as having ties which might inadvertently help the Chinese armed forces. Imperials say they work closely with the government's export controls unit and all their work is regularly reviewed. So it's important to say that we're not accusing any UK researcher or UK university of malpractice or intentionally doing anything wrong. But what worries us is we've found 15 universities in the UK that have relationships with Chinese military companies or Chinese military linked universities. They're either being sponsored by these entities or they're actually doing research with some of these entities. And the risk is that research that's done in the UK that's meant to be for civilian use could be misused in China and frankly help arm China. Eight years ago, Prime Minister David Cameron took a huge team of business leaders and university chiefs to China to forge closer links. Theresa May followed in 2018, though by then, under President Xi, hopes had faded that stronger links with the West and a more liberal economy would help liberalise Chinese politics too. Sadly, Chairman Xi has reversed that. Now, he's not, uh, you know, there are dissenting voices within the Communist Party of China who do raise objections and wish that they were continuing on the path that they were on before 2012, 13, 14. But at the moment, Chairman Xi is dominant. And so we've got to look at China as it is today, not as we wish it were. And looks like being dominant for a very long time. Well, he's certainly abolished any term limits and he's declared himself uh, he's put uh, Xi Jinping's thought into the Chinese constitution, so he's certainly, uh, he's certainly made himself quite a fixture. China has probably become too big a trading partner, too involved in our economy for us simply to cut them off. And for the universities, they do benefit both financially and intellectually from the link. The question is, how and where do we draw the line to avoid accusations of aiding and abetting tyranny?